Great, thank you. Um, I'm in New Zealand, so you've got my four in the morning face. Apologies for that. Um, so in recent years, uh, many countries have undertaken a process of national risk assessment, producing national risk registers, and in many cases, um, risk uh, uh, matrices uh, for communication purposes. However, there's many shortcomings to these processes. For example, prior to a 2010 eruption of an Icelandic volcano, volcanic eruption did not appear as a risk in the UK National Risk Register. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, similar registers uh, thought that emerging infectious diseases might risk 100 lives. Uh, and also the summary of public feedback to uh, the proposed New Zealand National Security Long-Term Insights Briefing this year does not mention the word nuclear. Yet nuclear winter, emerging infectious diseases, uh, and major volcanic eruptions are considered globally catastrophic or even existential risks. Outside of the national risk assessment process, a number of arguments are made for why X risks are so salient. It might be to do with moral aversion to discounting future lives or the importance of anticipatory government governance, or perhaps uh, the importance of continuing human scientific and cultural endeavors over, over long periods of time. Um, but perhaps national risk assessment processes reject these arguments. Well, we can reject all the arguments on the previous slide and all consideration of the future. And to avoid problems of Pascal's mugging or the need to compare lives across time, we can cap potential harm at just the 8 billion people who exist today and look at just the next one year. Um, and this number of uh, people could be weighted to any country's national risk assessment. If we then apply published estimates of X-risk probability, crudely assuming a static probability across time, then we find that the expected harm in year one is higher for many existential risks than for all natural disasters combined. For example, the expected harm from nuclear war uh, of an existential magnitude is 80,000 lives in year one compared to natural disasters, which sum to 60,000 lives in total. And an engineered pandemic, for example, has an expected harm of 2.7 million lives uh, per year, just considering the existential risk component. But of course, the expected harm of existential risks goes far beyond the harm of the actual or an actual existential instance of that risk. Taking the case of pandemics, to the 2.7 million lives at risk uh, in the previous slide, we can add the expected harm from non-existential uh, manifestations of, of the event, of engineered pandemics, of natural pandemics, laboratory escapes. And when we sum this, we find that the expected harm is 3.5 million lives per year under what are relatively conservative calculations. And even if there is great uncertainty around the probability of these risks. And even if these probabilities as published by Ord are out by two orders of magnitude in year one, then there are still 800,000 expected lives at risk when summing the pandemic harm. It, assumes, it's just, it seems that national risk assessments uh, should assign high importance to these kinds of risks. But methodological and normative choices bias national risk assessments and what they consider. And societies really need to agree on things like fundamental assumptions like the time frame of interest for these assessments, the scenario choice, whether we're looking at worst case, most frequent case, or some challenging but plausible scenario, any discount rate used across time, and any decision rule applied. And a single risk matrix, as is often presented, hides a complex set of assumptions and uncertainties. For example, a risk might be possible in the immediate future, but with minor consequences. Uh, another version of the same risk might be unlikely in year one, but catastrophic if it were to occur. Across 50 years, the risk may become frequent and serious with a likely and catastrophic outcome. And trajectories across time uh, may not be represented in national risk registers. So should we be looking at just one year across 50 years? Should we discount the future? Should we consider reasonable scenarios or the worst case? Should we maximize the minimum outcome or address the most common risks? 
There is no public mechanism, and this is the problem, to explore the outcome of national risk assessments under different assumptions. And choices about which risks to include in national risk assessments and which assumptions to base risk characterization upon are issues that merit public consultation and merit open expert peer review. Published national risk assessments are just one possibility among many. So we favor the development of a two-way public interactive communication tool. And we've seen uh, during COVID-19 how interactive dashboards where assumptions can be adjusted uh, have led to wide public and journalistic understanding of the risk. We've all come to know what R is and how it can be uh, adjusted in estimates. Similar work could be undertaken with national risk assessments. And uh, this could provide a vocabulary for national risk discussions. And such an online platform driven by a database of risk information and relevant forecasts could allow exploration of uncertainty, scrutiny of knowledge, identification of omissions, and maybe even crowdsourced solutions and many other features. We can give diverse people and diverse experts the tools to author their own national risk assessments and achieve experiential learning. So in summary, we've suggested that even rejecting all the standard arguments for the salience of existential risk and performing simple expected value calculations, then X risks look more salient than all natural disasters combined in year one. But furthermore, to avoid groupthink or politicization of national risk assessment process assumptions, wide engagement is needed. The public must legitimize national risk assessment assumptions. And if many countries' national risk assessments highlighted existential risks, then a more outward looking and cooperative approach around the globe might be fostered. At the very least, inclusion of these risks in national risk assessments uh, or in the national risk process might make the case for investment in improved X risk characterization. Thank you. That's good night, Brian, for calling in at 4 a.m. I think that's. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, any, any question in the room? Uh, this is something that we are very keen on as well and have been um, uh, putting submissions into the UK government uh, uh, as well to, to try and improve the our, our, uh, National Risk Register. Um, yeah, any... Um, could you just maybe say like a, a little bit more about how you envisage this interactive communication tool? Like what are some of the, the, the things that could be uh, adjusted? What are some of the sliders? Could you just say a bit more about that, please? Yeah, sure. So look, um, I, I think there's there's some some different things here. There's there's the the underlying assumptions of the process itself, um, and then there's the um, you know characteristics of of individual risks. So I guess the underlying process assumptions include you know quite fundamental things like what time frame are we looking across, and um, you know if, if a risk has a relatively low probability across maybe two years, um, you, you know of just a few percent. Uh, it, it might look like it's unlikely, but but if you're looking across 50 years, then um, you would expect that risk uh, to, to to manifest. And so I think I think the public and uh, you know and, and expert stakeholders and so forth, you know, need, need to be able to, to um, uh, have this you know sort of put in front of them to play around with and and to and to um, uh, you know perhaps answer a, a set of questions about you know which assumptions they prefer. You know, do they want to discount? Uh, the, the harms over 50 years or, or do they want to um, you know not apply a discount rate and, and so forth and see uh, how the risks um, uh, rank basically um, when they when they do those sorts of adjustments 